Okay, welcome back to MathNinja.org. Today I'm going to be talking about point-slope word problems. Now, in the uh, earlier parts of this chapter, we've been talking about point-slope equations. We've been talking about standard form. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of things, uh, you know, about linear equations. But today we're going to kind of do a, a special lesson where we're going to we're going to kind of just bring it all together, right? We're going to take everything we've learned and use it in a context of doing word problems. Okay, so everything we're going to be doing today is word problems. And one thing to keep in mind is any numbers that we write today, I want to make sure that you write them the the numbers as expressive as possible you know don't just write numbers but tell me what those numbers stand for okay so keep that in mind as we go so today the biggest thing you need to keep in mind after that is this you need to be looking reading these problems and looking for the one of these three things read the question and say did they give me a slope and a y-intercept did they give me a slope and a point did they give me two points? Because depending on what they give you, you're going to have to do different things. So for example, if they gave you the slope and the y-intercept, right? If they gave you this, slope and y-intercept, all you would have to do is rewrite it as y equals mx plus b. And if you've been in my, uh, if listened to other videos or you've been in my class, that's pretty easy to do. You would just plug in the slope and the y-intercept and you're done. Now, if they give you a slope and a point, then you would have to use the point-slope formula, right? y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And sometimes you might even have to calculate the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? And then the third type, they might just give you two random points on the graph, right? If they give you two random points, then all you're going to do first is you're going to find the slope, and then you're going to use one of those points in the point-slope formula, all right? Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the word per today, all right? If you hear the word per, it's going to stand for slope, okay? Per, like price per pound, so example, price per pound, that's a slope, right? The price is the y because it's the top, and the x is the pounds, right? Miles per hour, right? Miles over hours. Miles must be the y, hours must be the x, because remember, slope is y over x, right? All right, so keep that in mind, the word per. Now, back to the problems. I want to tell you today, after you read the, the problem, right? So, so for example, one, the print shop charges an initial fee for each order of $2. And then they charge you 25 cents per page. There you go, right? That word per means slope, right? Write an equation for the total cost as a function of number of papers. Now, let me tell you a little story. When I first started teaching, I would kind of gloss over that that sentence, right? They would usually tell you this sentence right here, the one that I just gave you the arrow of. And I would kind of just ignore it because I didn't think it was important. But the longer I teach, the more I realize that I, I did a bad idea there. All right, here's what it's saying. Write an equation for the total cost as a function of number of pages. What that means is you're putting number of pages into the function, into the machine. So you're gonna put into the machine the number of pages and it's gonna spit out the cost. That makes sense, right? You walk into the store, you say, I want 28 pages printed, they're gonna tell you the cost. You put the number of pages in, you get the cost out. That's important. If you're putting this in and you're getting this out, then the independent variable must be the number of pages because you're putting those into the equation, right? Remember, independent, input, x value, they all mean the same thing. That would make the dependent, you tell them how many pages you want, and the cost depends on how many pages you put in. So first thing first, find that equation, right? Or find that sentence, sorry. Find that sentence and read what it's saying. Pages is the, it's a function of the number of pages. You're putting pages in, you're getting cost out. Figure out what the independent dependent is, right? All right, let's go back to the, so the first part, write an equation. We can't write an equation on a letter A yet because we don't know the slope or the y-intercept. So let's go back and read it. The print job charges an initial fee for each order of $2. What does that mean? Uh, a lot of people, when I teach this in my class, they usually start raising their hand pretty quickly, which means I did a pretty good job of explaining this. But people usually can spot really quick that that's a y-intercept. Because watch, even if you printed no print jobs, so the point, no print jobs, zero print jobs would still cost you $2. Why would no print jobs cost you $2? Because just for the initial setup, right, the initial fee would be $2. Ooh, that's cool because that's a y-intercept. 
So the y-intercept is 0 comma 2. And then I want you to write that in words, right? A $2 initial fee. Okay. Go back, keep reading. And charges 25 cents per page. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying 25 cents per page. And I want to write that as a like as a slope equation too, right? It's like a fraction. So 25 cents over one page. Now notice, check this out. This is kind of cool. We said the cost was the de dependent, right? We said the cost was the dependent, and that's the y, right? So it's y over x. You don't have to write that, but I want you to see it, right? The cost was the dependent, so it's the y. The number of pages was the independent, it's the x. So it's y over x. That's the rate of change, that's slope, yeah? All right. So there we go. We got the two pieces. We got the slope. We've got the y-intercept. We can write the equation. We can come back to letter A now, and the equation is going to be y equals 25 cents times the number of pages x plus $2 initial fee. If I wanted to write this more carefully, like as a word problem in real life, we wouldn't use x and y. We'd use letters that make sense. So we would do it this way. The cost, C is equal to 25 cents times the number of pages P plus two dollars. All right, check this out. Another cool thing to check. You should always look at these two pieces. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna do it a different color so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so these two pages, pieces right here. If I'm adding two things, you don't have to write this, so just put your pencil down and just pay attention to this. If you're adding two things, I don't know if this dawned on you, but it took me a long time to figure this out. But if I'm adding two things, they've got to be the same stuff. The only thing I can, you've heard me say this before, but the only thing I, add, I can add to apples is more apples. I can add bananas with bananas, cookies with cookies. But you can't add dogs and cats. Well, you can, but you get animals, right? If I say, what's two dogs plus three cats, you're going to look at me like I'm stupid because that doesn't really make sense because it's, you can't add them, right? So the, if I'm able to add... 25 cents times P plus $2, then they must be the same thing. So ask yourself this question. What would 25 cents times the number of pages give me? Well, if you think about it for a minute, the number of pages times 25 cents would tell me how much I'm spending to print, right? So it's how much money I'm spending printing. Sorry about that ink that I use. But how much I spent print, uh, printing, right? Spent to print. The $2 is an initial fee. Now, what am I adding? So at, look at this. Oh, money for printing plus $2 for initial fee. I'm adding money plus money. Money plus money should equal cost, how much I'm spending. Money plus money equals money. I need you to make sure you look at that because it'll tell you if you're on the right track. If you end up with like money and number of dogs, that's not going to make sense. Like saying, what's $5 plus eight dogs? Uh, nonsense. You can't add them. Okay? So if I'm adding these two things, they better be the same thing. Okay? All right. I'll, I'll try to focus on that again later on, too. All right. Let's go on to the next part. Uh, letter part four. Write the cost. What is the cost for 200 prints? Well, since we know the equation, right? It's y equals 25 cents times the number of prints, 200 plus a $2 fee. Well, 25 cents, hey, uh, just hey, FYI, I don't care how you do the 25 cents times 200. I've already tested you on everything. I know you're good at that kind of math. So you can use a calculator for this, but I think this is $50, right? So $50 plus $2, which is $52. What does that mean? It's $52 for 200 prints. And there we go. That's it. How many prints can be made for $17? Well, that's the cost, right? So $17 is going to equal to 25 cents times the number of prints. You can call it P or X, right? Plus the $2 fee. That's an algebra problem. So just do some real simple algebra, minus 2, minus 2. I don't even care if you end solve this, right? You get 15 equals 0.25X. Divide by a quarter, divide by a quarter. Dividing by a quarter is times 4 if you do the math, right? So x is going to equal to 60. 60 prints for $17. Whoa. Sorry about that. For $17. There you go. 
All right, we're going to do three more of these. So I'm going to take my time with them. But that's the basic idea, right? All, every single time, read the problem, go and read the second part, right? Right, this is the key. I can I stress this to you enough, right? This is the key right here, this part right there. When it tells you what the function is, that tells you everything else starts falling into place once you know the function. So let's look at example two. All right. When a tree was planted, it was four feet tall. After five years, it was 12.75 feet tall, right? Write an equation for the height of the tree as a function of time. There we go. There's that thing again, right? You're putting the number of years into the machine, and it's going to spit out the height of the tree. So what am I putting into the machine? The number of years, right? So the independent is number of years. And I'm going to be very specific. Number of years since planted, right? That's the independent. The dependent is what? The height of the tree. And you can put it in feet if you want it, because if you read it, it's in feet. Yeah? All right. So there we go. Independent, dependent. When the tree was planted, it was four feet tall, okay? So what am I saying with that? You should spot that. When the tree was planted, right? So when, it, when its age was zero, when it was planted, its age was zero, it was four feet tall. Ooh, that's a y-intercept, right? Hold on, sorry about that. It's a y-intercept. Sorry, it's y-intercept, zero comma four. Zero comma four. What does that mean? When planted, so year zero, it was four feet tall. All right, good. All right, so there's a point, zero, four, the y-intercept. And then after five years, so year five, it was 12.75 feet tall. Now, real quick, uh, people struggle with this. Is it five comma 12.75? Or, so let me, let me write this. Is it 5, 12.75 as the point? Or is the point 12.75, 5? Right? Some of you are going to ask me that. You're going to say, which one is it? How do I know? I know because of this. The independent is the year since planted. So the time is independent, so it's the x. Right? The time, this was the time, so that's the x, that's the y. So it is that one, right? All right. So what do I have now? Let's read it. Well, I've got the y-intercept, right? I've got 0, 4, and I've got another point. So if I go back to this little thing that I wrote earlier on, right? Oh, if I have two points, I can use the point-slope formula, right? I can use the point-slope formula that you should already be familiar with. So I'm not going to talk about what the point-slope formula is. If you don't know, go back and watch that video, okay? But the point-slope formula. I can use the point-slope formula. All right. Um, in order to use the point-slope formula, I need to know the slope. So let's calculate the slope, all right? Remember, the slope is the y's over the x's, right? Change in y over change in x. So I'm going to do 12.75 minus 4 over 5 minus 0. Well, 12.75 minus 4 is 8.75 over 5. I don't mind if you use a calculator tonight, so I'm just going to use a calculator for this. 8.75 uh, 8 divided by 5 is 1.75. So the slope is 1.75 feet per year. Or, another way to write that, 1.75 feet over one year. That's the slope. Cool. I have the slope now, and I have the y-intercept. So a minute ago I said, hey, you're going to use the point-slope formula. But I don't need the point-slope formula because I have the slope and the y-intercept. I can go straight to the equation. So that's what I'm going to do, right? Uh, I have the slope and the y-intercept, so I can write the equation. y equals, what's the slope? 1.75x plus, what? Uh, what did we say? 4, right? The y-intercept is 4. Or the height is equal to 1.75 times the number of years since planted. Uh, let's do let's do. T as in time, number of years, right? T is number of years plus how tall was it when I planted it? Four feet tall. Yeah? Notice once again, check this out. This is kind of neat. I don't know. If it's neat to me. 
If I'm adding two things, what did I say earlier? If you're adding two things, they have to be the same units. I can add miles plus miles. I can add money plus money. So if I'm adding these two things, they must be the same thing. If I do 1.75 feet times the number of years, what am I figuring out? How tall the tree is, right? How much it's grown. So this will be how much it's grown plus the four feet that it already was. Oh, I'm adding feet plus feet is what I'm doing. And feet plus feet must equal feet, right? Feet plus feet must equal how tall is it, which is the height. So everything's working. All right. How tall is a tree after 12 years? Well, all I have to do is go to the equation then. Y equals 1.75. How many years? 12 plus 4. Just plug it in, right? So I'm going to do that. 1.75 times 12 plus 4 is 25. So it's 25 feet tall after 12 years. And the next question is really simple. How tall is, if the tree is 25 feet tall, how old is it, right? So let's do it, right? So y equals, oh, I don't have to do it because I already know that when it was 25 feet tall, it was 12 years old, right? So when it's 25 feet tall, how old is it? 25 years old. All right. All right. Next problem. I need to check something real fast. I want to make sure my computer does not restart. I think I'm okay. All right. Uh, during the period, this is a little bit trickier. During the period of 1994 to 2004, the annual sales of a company increased by $10,000 per year. Ooh, 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 ooh. Slope, right? I'm going to write that right now. $10,000 per year. All right. In 1997, the annual sales were 97,000. Write an equation for the annual sales as a function of the years since 1994. You're going to put into the machine the number of years since 1994. It's going to spit out the annual sales. Okay. So you got to be careful here because we're going to say 1994 is year zero, which makes 1995 year one, which makes 1996 year two, right? You don't want to put in the year as as the number, right? You don't want to put in 1994 as the year because how many years since 1994 is 1994? Zero years, not 1,994 years, right? Make sense? All right. So keep that in mind. We've got the slope. What else do we have? In 1997, the, the it was $9,700. All right. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. So what is the independent? What are we putting into the machine? The independent is the number of years since 1994. The dependent is what? The annual sales. All right. All right. So if... If the sales in 1997 were 97,000, here's my question. Is it 1997 comma 97,000? Or is it the reverse? Is it 97,000 comma 1997? The answer is neither one, right? Because if I put the year as 1997, I'm saying 1,997 years since 1994. What is 1997? Oh, 1997 is four years after 1994. No, it is three years since 1994. All right, three years, right? So it's three years since 1994. So three means three years after 1994, which would be make it 1997. All right? So the point is three comma 97,000. Uh, All right? All right, so what do I have now? Well, I have a slope and I have a point. Cool. I can go to the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? So y minus 97,000 is equal to 10,000 times x minus, what year was it? Year 3. Do the algebra. y minus 97,000 equals 10,000 x minus 30,000, right? Bring the 97,000 over, and I think I'm done, right? I think I get 67,000. So it's y equals 10,000x plus 67,000. I'm not going to go into the math there. I'm just manipulating the algebra. Go watch the other videos if you need help with that. All right. All I'm doing is getting into y equals 4, right? y equals mx plus b. So what's the equation? 
y equals 10,000 x plus 67,000. Uh, 67,000, right? One extra zero, right? Cool. What's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 0, 67,000. What does that y-intercept mean in words? It means in 1994, the cells, not the slails, the cells were 67,000. Okay, that's it. All right, number four, let me check something real fast to make sure I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording, good. All right, what is the annual sales in 2004? All right, that's the last year, right? Remember, this is only good from 1994 to 2004. So what year is 2004? <laughs> well, it's 10 years later. So they're asking about what happens in year 10. So it's y equals 10,000 times x. x is 10 because that's 1994 is 10 years later, right? Or 2004 is 10 years later, plus the uh, initial amount, which was 67,000. All right? So that's what? 100,000 plus 67,000. So 167,000. So $167,000 in sales in, in 2004. Okay. All right. If the annual sales were 67,000, what year was it? Well, that was easy. We already know that one, 1994, right? We did that earlier. All right. Now, last question. I'm going to go a little bit faster now. From 1990 to 2010, the price of mail of an envelope increased linearly, means it went up pretty much um, linearly, right? So the slope was constant. In 1995, an envelope cost $5, and in 2000, it was eight seventy-five. dollars Write a qu an equation for the cost as a function of years since 1994, right? So you're going to put the years in. It's going to tell you the cost. Okay, independent, dependent, right? So the independent, I'm putting in number of years since 1990, and the dependent is cost of an envelope, All right? All right, so let's go read it. What else do we have here? In 1995, what year is that? That's year five, five years after 1990, the cost was $5. So the first point I know is five, five. In 2000, what point is that? That's 10 years later, it was 875. Cool, I have two points, All right? Two points. So what can I do? If I'm given two points, I can use the slope formula to find the slope, right? 8.75 minus 5 over 10 minus 5. So I get a slope of 3.75 over 5, and I'm just going to let a calculator do that math. I don't feel like doing it. So 3.75 divided by 5 is 75 cents. What does that mean? The slope was 75 cents per year. Right? Or another way of writing that, right, is 75 cents over one year. Yeah? All right, I've got a point. I'm sorry, I've got a slope, and I've got a point, so I can use the point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. All right, I can use that equation, so I'm just going to plug it in. Y minus, I'm going to use that first point five five. so Y minus 5 equals... 0.75 times x minus 5. Plug it in. y minus 5 equals 0.75x minus times 5 is 375 plus 5 plus 5. y is, uh, what is that, $1.25? Oh, hold on. Messed that up. Um, y is equal to 0.75x plus $1.25. Cool, that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 125. And what does that mean? In year 0, so in 1990, the cost was $1.25. All right? 
All right, I've got everything. I can go back and write the equation, right? Y equals 0.75x plus $1.25, or the cost is equal to 75 cents times the number of years, we'll call it T, plus $1.25. And notice once again, this is money. This is money, right? 75 cents times the number of years will tell you how much it went up by, how much money it went up by. Money plus money, right? Money plus money will equal money, the cost of the envelope. All right, what was the cost of the envelope in 2002? Well, how many years since 1990 is that? 12 years, right? So all I'm going to do is going to go to the equation. I'm going to put a 12 in for x. because That's 12 years after 1990 plus the initial fee of $1.25, or the first year was $1.25. So 0.75 times 12 plus $1.25 is 10.25. What does that mean? It was $10.25 to mail an envelope in 2002. If the cost of the standard letter was 4.25, what year was it? Well, that's a little bit trickier, right? So, whoa, hold on here. Let me fix that. Um, so, the cost was 4.25. That is equal to 75 cents times the number of envelope or number of years plus a dollar twenty-five. Subtract a dollar twenty-five minus a dollar twenty-five. So that's three dollars. So that's three equals 0.75x. So three divided by 0.75 is four. So x is four. What does four mean? It was four years since this started. So four years since 1990. In 1994, the cost was 425. All right, guys, that's it. It's a long lesson, right? It took me a while to get through it, but there's a rhythm to these, right? All you have to do, read the equation. I'm going to say this one last time before I call call that a day here. Make sure you read this equation so that you know what the function's about. Figure out the independent, the dependent. Go back and read the equation again, start pulling out points and slopes, and then all the rest of it falls in. All right? Point slope word problems, you will see a bunch of these. I, I have a feeling you're going to be pretty good at them. If you've been following along the, les the other lessons, uh, this is not going to be hard. So good luck with it, and you know, send me an email or uh, leave me a comment on my website if you have questions about this. All right, have a nice day.